Hello, how are you guys doing tonight? Welcome to Bree's Podcast. Tonight, we will be talking about social media. Today, I have Kay Ray and Jaden Smith as my star guests for tonight's topic. How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing well. How about you, Sabrina? You're, you know who it is. I'm Not my dog. Well I'm so glad to be here, you know. You know, we back again with this podcast. I'm here I'm here for the questions. I'm here. All right, all right. So let's start off with what does social media mean to you? And it doesn't necessarily have to stay on social media as in like Instagram, Snapchat. It could be music, it can be video games, it could be even books mm. or um movies too or shows. Mm. But take it away. So who shall go first on the media discussion? Okay, well, social media, what does it mean to me? Well, honestly, it's just a very, a a source where you can interact with your friends, your family. It doesn't have to be the negative light that we do see in social media. I thought social media was for you know, interacting with your friends, but it's become a source of bullying. It's become a source of body shaming. It's become a source of negativity, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, in my opinion, I feel like social media is something that has built such a community of online people because. Mm-hmm. To be honest, media has have a, a purpose for everybody. You got media, you got social media for two different, you know, characters of people. You got people that go in there to have fun, enjoy with their friends, have a blast mm-hmm. with, with some people. And, you know, you got people that use it for the negative, you know, do some sick things like, you know, groom minors, uh, try to be very abusive and vulgar to others. So I feel like social media has, it has a pro and con, but in my opinion, I feel like social media is good because it does give you information for, you know, about history, about what's going on in the world right now, and, you know, to pass the time. You want to play some games with your friends? Just, you know, hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? Let's play some Call of Duty real quick. Boom. Play some games. Yeah, that, that's definitely a highlight of being <laughs> on social media. You know, get to play games with your friends, you know, interact with people you've never met before. And then you have the dark side of social media where it's just negative. I mean, it's so hurtful that you can be posting a picture about yourself and then someone has to go against what you're saying or just have vengeance against you for no reason. And usually people use that as um, to boost their own confidence. And, you know, I see that a lot with bullying. Like social media has become a new bullying platform. Mm-hmm. so it's not just you know being bullied in person not al- let alone so you'll go to school one day and you could just be bullied in person and then as soon as you get home you're bullied on social media so it's very it can it's a good and bad light towards social media definitely mm-hmm. now it's very interesting I like both of your your two's aspects on um, media itself Mm-hmm. Now, I would like to know, in your own opinion, how much do you think media has changed over the years? Uh, about well, that. No. <laughs> that is a fantastic question. Jay, you want to take this one? First? Okay, so <laughs> I would gladly say that media has first started with newspapers. Like, we all know that, like, you know, media, like, social media in general started in, like, newspaper where you're going to find out what's going on going on with the world what's going on today so the fact that we could get the news from just from our phone not even from the tv anymore you can get it from your phone from your laptop heck you can even get on your apple watch if you got money like that but (laughs) you know know, the fact that media has evolved that we could get information so quickly it shows how media has become more more like a modern thing in a, in society like yes anything definitely. can just be easy to like to access, get access. Mm-hmm. i agree with that i agree with that completely and when you say media has changed it's not just really 
the aspect of you know instagram snapchat stuff that's out today like you said back in the newspapers magazines Facts. and the news you know where you would get mm-hmm. your media your entertainment or your source of information from and i have to also believe that has changed with the course of technology mm-hmm. because you know back in the 50s we don't we didn't have the technology that we do now Indeed. it's completely oh, a different aspect you know it's just being able to look up something on your phone really quickly or look up mm-hmm. something on your laptop, your tablet, and even your Apple Watch. It's very, <laughs> it's very, it's a great source. You can, you, I mean, honestly, you can find so much information. You can find out about the weather, the time, mm-hmm. where you need to go, what what time is it in a different country if you're just curious. You can find mm-hmm. funny videos on media. You can find, um, sad videos scary things you know you could just find about just about everything within your phone Uh just opening up safari or google you'll definitely find a source of information that you were looking for or interested in i also like to think that social media has come quite in handy for people who just don't like to go to the library and read a book. You can get an e-kindle and do it that way. Oh, 100%. 100%. So, that way. <laughs> you, you know, I'm, I'm very much, I love, you know, a book. But if I could get that book on my phone, I would gladly do that and just read oh, it through the screen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's a bit easier and a bit handy but, to have that book on hand. Yeah. yeah. But I feel, but like, I, you know, we need more facts about the first, you know, platform of social media and yeah. Like, does anybody well, have any, actually, like... Actually, I got an interesting fact to share. Oh, okay. So, Ooh. did you guys know that the first social media, well, that they claim it to be the first social media platform that was created was called Plateau? Plateau. And it was created, yeah, and it was created at the University of Illinois back in 1993. Wow. And it was used to help a lot of students chat with one another, and they were able to share notes and also their screen. So, in a way, it was like... You know how we have Zoom and um, mm-hmm. Google Meets? Mm-hmm. We're able to ah, share screens and share notes. Doing. So they were more advanced than what we are now. Wow. History. Hey. That's that's interesting, actually. History. And kinda, I kind of like the way it's developed now. I mean, if you want to share a note, it's, it's pretty simple to do that now. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Very thinking about true. it in the 1930s, it's just like, not, you know... Yeah, <laughs> not the 1930s, Jesus Lord. They definitely didn't have technology, but <laughs> the 1993, 1993. Now that is, you know, time has really changed. You know, as you're, we're developing as a community, Seriously, I definitely yeah, believe beautiful. that. You know, the wow. internet is a very, very, very beautiful gift, but also the worst curse. Now you want to know something crazy too. Mm-hmm. So apparently, Plateau wasn't actually the very first social media platform per se. Yes. Ooh. The actual social media platform was called, and I'm more than likely going to um, mispronounce it, so I'm just going to spell it out, N-S-F-N-E-T. And that came around a couple of years later, so from in 1997, mm-hmm. from the National Science Foundation. Okay. So... Today, they call, they, uh, sorry, they call that the first social media platform because of how much it was able to help people learn more about their um, science facility within that year, which I find crazy. That's actually very useful. I mean, we have, you know, the ability to just look up online what's going on in space <laughs> you know, right it's, just, it's a very quick google search very quick safari search but to actually have a software set up for us to just go onto that site and look up back then that must have been very useful it must have been very productive it must have been very you know interesting to learn new things that mm-hmm. are outside of your element being able to go out and search something up without you know having to pick up a book or pick up this heavy textbook from the 50s like, you know it's just <laughs> it's nice to have this handy and i mean those computers weren't um you know putting your book bag type of computers they they had some boxes to them i mean there was a lot of things connected to that one box but it was definitely useful at home mm-hmm. if you were at home and you just needed to do a quick search definitely 
Now I got a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. So after going um checking on our Twitter page, I saw that someone commented by just by forty four commented that apparently back in nineteen eighty nine, thirty two years ago on March twelfth, they decided to go into the works of creating the first um web server. Mm. And that first web server was actually created August 6, 1991 by wow. Berners Lee. And he posted a short summary on the World Wide Web project. And he w- was able to have new groups investing and collaborations from that, which I find very cool. Wow. That's fire. That's fire. That's, that's actually pretty incredible, you know. But, you, but, what, I, but what, what I would say is that the fact that like media has been here for like decades. I'm talking about decades. Mm-hmm. Now, the funny thing is, the first computer was actually made in 1822, and that's now just that's crazy dope. to think about. That's crazy to think about that the first ever like technology for that will soon to be our new aspects of media was made a hundred years ago. That's crazy. That's just seriously. Flabbergasted. It's uh. It's it's incredible how far we've come with technology. Oh, definitely. And it, it definitely plays a role in social media today. Oh, indeed, indeed. indeed. Oh, of course. We wouldn't have social media now if no one decided to sit down and say, hey, I want more than just seeing our black and white TVs and just mm-hmm. having newspapers and books to read. Exactly. You know, it's it just, really it just that took that one person. That. And you right? know, I would also like to put that out there. Many people don't like him. Many people have negative ideas of him, and you know. Oh, but I will say he was a great businessman, and he came out with what most people are holding in their hands today: the Apple, you know, iPhone, anything i product. You know, it, it's it's a creation from his idea, sitting up in his garage. Oh, one hundred percent. So you have to think about it. He has created beautiful products for us for years. He's r.i.p to steve jobs you know it's just he created something that we can hold in our hands not a heavy textbook not a big bulky computer that we did have in the 90s he created something that was handheld he created something that you could put in your backpack and then take it out whenever you need it you know he created a source where people can and communicate via through a iphone you know via through mobile you know transport it was just a very interesting and time consuming i will say it was time consuming Mm -hmm. but it was a brave thing to do i mean to think about back then how people may have looked at him crazy for saying oh i don't want to carry a big bulky book around just to have information you know i don't you know, it just might have it may it may have been a bit you know scary for him to proceed with this product without you know thinking beforehand how people would react. He just wanted to do something that he thought was convenient for himself and for everyone else. I one hundred percent agree with you. Now, what I could definitely add on to that is with Apple, right? I was thinking of Mark Zuckerberg this whole entire time because mm. he created Facebook while yes. in college at the age of 18 and look where he is now yes it's Billions. crazy how he decided to do all of that hard work with a group of people and managed to just become the ceo of facebook that's honestly fantastic to me but what i will say is which leads uh, um us to our next question for you guys is do you think a lot of people depend on social media and i honestly oh. feel like a lot of people do because Hold when on. Facebook got shut down for six hours, I believe it was last week. I could be wrong on um, that. It was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Um, a lot of people didn't know what to do because a lot of their apps were connected to Facebook. Instagram yes. was connected to Facebook. WhatsApp is connected to Facebook. So everyone just felt blocked off. And I could definitely say myself is that I checked my phone quite a few times to check Instagram to see if it came back and every single time I kept on seeing a video of a guy drawing a whole bunch of different Marvel characters with six pens attached which I found pretty cool 
But I wanted to go on the Explore page and look up some cooking recipes and look up some nice nail designs. <laughs> you know, you wanted to do what you wanted to do. Yeah. Indeed. Not watch this guy draw. Indeed. But <laughs> I mean, that's perfectly fine. But I mean, the entire internet went into a frenzy. And because Facebook is controlling a lot of the social media platforms that we use, especially like Instagram, people were on Snapchat and even on TikTok, a new social media app that's been, you know, recently developed from Musical.ly, which is actually further developed. You know, people were on that app, you know, creating videos and asking why did Facebook shut down? Why what's going on? Why did the, you know, stock market drop? So crazy because people weren't able to use Facebook. I mean, I mean, you'll be on your phone for how many hours a day looking at something on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, whatever the case may be. We're on this app. We're on our phones constantly and for it to just stop in your middle of your day, just stop working. I mean, it just sent everyone into a frenzy. It was it was ridiculous. And then it made me sit down and realize how many people really are just on their phones. Oh, wow. 100%. Now you see, you see, now, since we're on this topic, I got to say my piece. Because now, you know, when that whole, you know, thing happened around, you know, Facebook shutting down, Instagram shutting down, WhatsApp, all that went down. You know what we had? We had Twitter. Now, Twitter showed me how much people... Oh, are so like invested on uh on social media because Twitter was making fun of everybody because Twitter was like yo like <laughs> like, like like y'all over here crying talking about oh my god I can't see my likes oh my god I posted a picture I hope I got a hundred likes oh wait it's down yo bro you could go on Twitter and just know that yo you're doing the most right now bro like Twitter is a uh is a is an app that I can say. When that was going down, really opened people's eyes because it really made memes about people that's so invested on it. Like people was like making fun of people that was like so like their lives are just consumed on photos. Like think about this. Instagram. Instagram. You post a picture, you get like 20 likes and it's been like two hours. You're like, oh my God. And like, let's say you have like 100 followers. You're going to take that and be like, oh, I, I feel like I should delete it because I don't have enough clout. And that's another thing that uh, media has corrupted people. Clout. Now, clout chasing is a big, and I mean a big problem when it comes to social media. People take clout and make it anything they could get to get any type of attention when it comes to uh, when it comes to fighting, uh, harming themselves, or even pranks, lying to, to other people to get any type of recognition, no matter if they give them any types of fame or infamous fame. But yeah. you know, that's a topic mm-hmm. for the discussion. But I will say, when it came down to Facebook having that um, outage due to whistleblowing allegations. The whistleblowing was crazy, too. Yes. And, you know, it was a six-hour outage. I mean, Facebook shut down for just about And nearly 5% of the stock dropped. Yeah, because, and, and it was... It was honestly insane i mean it reminded me how many people like rely on facebook i mean i was okay because i had tiktok and snapchat but god forbid tiktok and snapchat shut down the same time you know and twitter i don't use twitter (laughs) jay uses twitter i don't use twitter i feel like twitter is just an endless hole it's just there there. it's just there i mean (laughs) don't get me wrong i find i find some things on twitter that i think are funny but I just don't feel interested in Twitter. I mean, that's just not where I go. I go for TikTok for entertainment because I find people who are creative. And, you know, there's so many creative people on TikTok. I like to watch them. I mean, you know how many nail designs I've gotten off of TikTok? Who are you telling? The, the beautiful, the artistry. You know, well, there's some, actually, seriously. some people I want to get custom nails done by because they'll do, like, cool characters on their nails and I'm like you have the patience to do this this is seven hours right? you took on one nail are and you crazy beautiful and I mean it'll be beautiful I saw I saw one a nightmare before Christmas I was like I need Ooh. to get this and then I saw another one where it was the corpse bride I was like oh this Ooh. is beautiful Halloween themed um, but you I, to that later 
<laughs> oh, I definitely, definitely. I thought that was beautiful. You I was know, just so happy. You know, I see cooking recipes on TikTok, but I'm just saying, recipes. imagine if Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok all shut down in the span of six hours. How would people react? How would people move on with their lives? I mean, we're so dependent on social media. Would any of us bother to pick up a book? Wow. Would any of us bother mm. to, you know, do stuff around the house? Would any of us bother to learn how to cook something? Mm. Yo, Kayla, wow. are you are you I mean, we just don't realize how much social media has an impact on our brain and on our lives that we are so dependable on it. I mean, I would like to see a challenge where people were off their phones for 24 hours and see how long they would last. You know, I would actually, to be honest with you, I would last the maybe like twenty hours. Really, maybe twenty hours. Possibly, I think that's I think that's my limit. Is I don't know what I would do if I wasn't able to send my friend something funny on TikTok, and I just can't because it's shut down. I think honestly, I would be bored out of my mind. But then I forget that there's a message, you know. Mm-hmm. I could do that. But, you know, mm-hmm. I would love to do a challenge like that just to see how long I would last. Okay. But I don't think I would last that long. I think maybe 18 to 20 hours would be my limit. Okay. Okay, so how about this? I challenge you both because in my media literacy class, we actually have a project where we have to spend at least a day off of social media, not listening to music, just off of our phones for the whole entire day. I challenge you guys okay. to do that. And to write, to try and write about it for me, or tell me your experience in our next podcast. Okay, definitely, that could be done. I could do it. Uh, cool. I have, I have, I have, a, I have a, you know, I have a question. I have a like a just calm question. Um, what's the question? Now the question is, I I could do that, but I kind of need my music. I love music because. Oh music, yeah, if, oh, I'm sorry, you. Sabrina. I'm if you tell me to stop play, listening to music. I won't make it five hours, but if, if, oh, see, I agree with you right there. Like, like right I there, I'm a little bender. I need like, to, I, I like, need to listen to my R and B artists. I need to have my old school playlist. Like, I can't, I cannot live without music. Now what? that is actually interesting because we don't have records and you know CDs. Ooh, we only point. depend on social media, which that's, is like YouTube Music or Apple Music or Spotify. God forbid those things shut down too. What are that's, we gonna do? That's a that's a good actually that's a good point. I mean, I may be okay because I have a record player at home and my grandma has records, so I'll be all right. But I sometimes don't want to listen to all her music, <laughs> you know. I would love to see a rap song on a record player. Now that would be interesting. Uh, now I feel like that is a good point because the fact that all our music is in like these apps like SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music. It's it's kind of like, yo, what if those went away? Like, what are we gonna do for music? And you know, I just want to say that I I love me some music. I love me some Michael Jackson. I love me some. I love that. <laughs> you know, I love me. I love me my Michael Jackson. I love me my Prince. You know, purple rain. You know, I love that. Yeah. Purple rain. <laughs> but I, I can't. I can't like like I could. I could do your challenge. I will accept the challenge. But if you, you give me hint, yeah. if you could give me like you know a music for like at least five minutes, five minutes, me, five minutes. Yeah, I, I couldn't. Music is a little bender in this challenge because I'm the same way. I need to hear something because I will go a little insane with just it being quiet. Yes, it's weird. definitely. I mean, come on. When I'm on the train going to you know school or like, you know, just going to work, I need to have music, something to uplift me or something to calm me down or something mm. to just relax me. Music relaxes me. And not being able to listen to it would probably make me lose my marbles. <laughs> so I, I don't think I could do that one. You know, I will stop. I would get off Snapchat. I would stop using all social media. But if it includes music, I could never let music go. Music yeah, is such a beautiful aspect of life. I feel like everyone should listen to music. I feel like everyone should, you know, encourage others to listen to, to different music. And back on that social media topic, I find that it's 
hilarious or weird that if you're on TikTok and a song is playing in the background, you ask in the comment section, what song is this? I would love to hear it. I would love to download it. (laughs) And a person will gatekeep the song. By (laughs) gatekeeping, I mean they'll never give you the artist's name. They'll never give you the name of the song because they technically don't want you to ruin it. Now, I thought music was universal. I thought that was something everyone could listen to, everyone could enjoy, everyone could, you know, indulge in. But it seems like some people just hate that idea, and I don't know why. Because I feel like mu- music is a universal thing. It's it's I beautiful. Have the answer. Okay, why do you think that? Jay? So what I believe is is that since I'm okay, I'm gonna sit here and tell you, tell y'all right now. You know, everybody that's listening to this podcast, I am sort of a, of a geek. You know, a little bit of a nerd. You know, a little bit of a <laughs> troll. You know, a big so, nerd. You know, a little, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of a nerd. So, <laughs> so that the reason why people gatekeep is that they want to have a little bit of sense of power. Now, the reason why I say that is that. If, okay, if, if you know something, right, if, you, if I have something that I show you, and this is, like, amazing, you're like, oh, my God, yo, where did I get this, all that, and I don't give you that information, you're going to keep on trying to ask or at least ask other people, how did I how did I do this, all that? You know why? Because that's a sense of power. That's why I feel like people with media want this sense of power and, and control that, hey, I got, I got this dope-ass song or this dope-ass thing, and you will never know the name of it because I won't give it to you. And that's that the and nerd. I would like to add something on that actually. Indeed. I agree that a lot of people don't like to share the song, but there's a lot of apps out now that allow you to search up any song. Uh, for example, Shazam. Shazam is literally one touch away. They it hears a song and you try and find it. Yeah, and you know, thank you for people who created that app. I definitely right? appreciate you. <laughs> I love that app. When you hear a good song, it's like, man, what's that song? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Shazam, Shazam is a Shazam is a good thing, but not a lot of people want to like, you know, Shazam. They just be like, hey, I just want to ask you, you know, be polite. But since people in this world are so negative and just so like, you know, hungry, they just don't understand that. Hey, I could just just talk to you like a human being, because at the end of the day. People who are online are still human beings behind the screen. That's it. Yes. And the fact that you guys still want to give off this power of just, hey, I don't want to give you this amazing song. It just shows how bitter people are even in social media. So I completely agree with that. And social media actually so do I. Social media does uh, portray people's character because you can tell how a person is in media and how they might be in their life. Because if you leave a hate comment, in somebody's video or song anything, and it's like just a hurtful comment, like you're cursing them out, judging their music in a negative way, not really giving them criticism, it shows how you are as a person. Because in media, even though you can play a character, it still shows a little bit of yourself. Of you. Exactly. And you know what I also have to say? People are don't understand the difference between criticism and just being mean. Indeed. Now, with criticism, you can tell them, oh, you should probably work on this. You should probably take the auto-tune out. It doesn't fit right, you know, mm-hmm. when it comes to music. Indeed. But then as other people say, this song is just trash. This song is just horrible. It's just, <laughs> where is the sense of criticism? If you're going to try to say something, at least be supportive, but insist on trying to make the person fix. Literally, you know, try yeah. to make them you know, work on themselves or work on their music or work on their art. It doesn't have to be so concerning. Like it just, it doesn't have to be so hurtful. We can, we can go and use social media as a platform where we can spread positivity instead of of negativity. Mm -hmm. And there's also an issue with peeping people being overly sensitive. Now they'll try to, you know, victim, victimize what they're oh, going through on. and it's not it's not necessary it's yeah. also let's not get to that topic yeah that's a whole different topic where people <laughs> like to topic. victimize <laughs> themselves or people like don't or don't want to take criticism so they put themselves as a victim and saying that this person is saying something horrible Wait, to hold, them. On, hold on hold on i think we just got a comic miss Bree. can you please give us something i guess we got a comic right now yep all right we got a question from comment at cedar crest on twitter Indeed. Do you think social media changes people as a person? Hashtag oh, media hold on. week. Hold on, hold on. 
question. All right. So who would like to take this question first? Because I think I'll we all I'll have I'll something I'll to say. Go ahead, Jay. I see <laughs> you. You're eager. All right. All right. So boom. All right, everybody, get in your <laughs> get in your seats. This is about to be a, a grab your snacks. Shit. Let's get it ready. <laughs> now listen, 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 listen. Now social media has changed anybody as a person. Let's be honest. Now we have things. We have we we okay. When you go online, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can see how much a person has changed in character because of, like, like I said before about clout. Now, people love engagement. I don't like any any everybody loves engagement. You love mm-hmm. seeing, oh, I got two hundred likes on this photo. Oh, I like that. I like that everybody's you know commenting on my post and I, I'm pretty or or my clothes look good or I look, I look fashionable because we care so much about engagement. And sometimes it could it could change a person to be like, oh look, you only have like five hundred followers and only got twenty five likes. <laughs> oh, like like why why why? So what? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know that's what I have to say on that topic. You know when it comes to me for me. Uh, when it comes to the social media, so social media change people. It comes, it comes with especially celebrities. Oh, in this topic, <laughs> I mean, oh, wow. for me, I have social media. I can say or do anything really, but I, you know, I don't choose to be like a negative person or anything like that on social media. But sometimes. You know, celebrities use social media to advantage or to their disadvantage. It becomes a horrible situation. Indeed. Anything a person who is a celebrity or famous, they can post something on social media and the whole internet can go into a frenzy because they interpret it the wrong way. Cancel culture. Like, Thank oh. you for that cancel culture. I definitely think with also what I was saying before, they're very oversensitive, very victim blaming, very... um. What's the word? You know, just that people who just can't either take a joke or people who can't understand that maybe they shouldn't have a voice in this at all. It's sometimes better to hold some than speak some. So when it comes to celebrities in that sense, I feel as though they are always getting bashed about stuff that they don't really have to get bashed about. Especially in their past. Yeah. Especially if it's something they said when they were the same age as you, and you're speaking out against it. Mm-hmm. It seems a bit rash. I mean, if, if there's a video of them when they were like 16 years old, and they're 25, 35 years old now, and they're not still doing the same things that they were doing when they were 16, why are you bringing it up? Why do you feel it's necessary? Mm. Oh, actually, can I, can I say something real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, now... For instance, we all know about Dave Chappelle. We know about Dave Chappelle, right? Now, Dave Chappelle actually had a uh, a stand up uh, comedy about um about cancel culture. Now, what he said is something that I hundred percent agree with, and I love it. If you have to dictate somebody about their past and not dictate them about now, that shows that your life is boring, which is which is a hundred percent true. Because why are you worried about what I did in the past? When you can't worry about what I'm doing for the now. And that's mm-hmm. why I feel like Dave Chappelle be speaking some comical facts. Comical facts. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I definitely and, do. Yes. With also another thing when it comes to celebrities, they will also impact other people by changing them by what they post or what they say or what they do or their actions. You know? When it comes down to the whole, you know, the incident, you're not incident, it's still going on today, COVID-19. I am a, you know, a vaxxer. I believe in people getting the vaccine. I believe in the mandate of people getting this vaccine. I also believe that people should be wearing masks if they are unvaccinated and as well as vaccinated. You know, because a virus, if you didn't learn in science class, they mutate. So they can become Delta. They can become, you know, different variants other than COVID-19, which we've only come up with that vaccine. We Mm -hmm. haven't come up with, you know, COVID Delta, that Delta variant. We haven't come up with that vaccine yet. And it will keep on mutating if the spreading does not stop. 
that's why you should get the COVID-19 vaccine because it will prevent you from dying from COVID. And, the, and, and, and you know, reason- it's just, it's not about, you know, I could beat it. I could, you know, I've had family members die from COVID because they refused to get the vaccine. I have friends and friends of families who have, you know, just died from COVID even though they got the vaccine. You know, you can just slowly prevent it. There's a higher percent chance you may survive if you get the vaccine. And with this whole thing on celebrities insisting on how they, they voice their opinion, they'll say, get the vaccine, do what you have to do, but then have a COVID party with, without people wearing masks. That influences people. That makes people want to do the same things that you are doing. They have a hold over their followers. And it's not to say that they should be your mentor, that they should be your parent, so to speak. No. But they do have a hold of their followers. Get the hence why they are called followers. They have a bit of control over you. Now, you may say, no, I'm not going to believe everything that they say on the internet. Yeah, that's true. You don't have to. But some people out there do. They believe anything that comes out of, you know, other people's mouths who have a higher gain than them. They'll believe celebrities. They'll believe congressmen. They'll believe presidents. They'll believe anybody who says anything because they are higher rank. And that can be an issue when it comes to changing a person. It could, you know, change their ideas, change their values. And that's that's really the big issue, I think, is celebrities with this social media thing. So... Now, to add on to that, I do, uh, back to the, the original question, which was, can the social media change people as a person? Uh, social media builds character on people who would clown other people just to get some type of comedy likes. People, you know, talk down on others just to make other people laugh and stuff. Social media does build you with either ego, you know, sometimes you build, like, sadness because you get uh, like you get sad because you don't get the recognition that you want like other people get and it does actually give people to be jealous because people pe- okay in reality we all we all we're all different we're all different we all do different things we all experience different things but when we go in the web we want to like at least have type some type of a, like like we can still have something to relate to and the fact that a lot of people go on these apps you know you know try to you know be something that they're not so they could get some type of recognition it is you know sad that people don't be themselves because they don't want to be judged because social media does become a judgmental place because everybody's judging everybody you could put po- you could post like a very nice family photo and there's gonna be that one person that's gonna make a funny comment trying to be funny and that's and that and that's sad because everybody takes social media into ways where you could be having it to have fun or having it to just be a rival and just disgusting person which is crazy I agree Indeed. and you know since we're talking about social media in such a negative light I thought I would bring you know a positive light to social media especially when it came down to George Floyd being murdered oh, that um, good. I would like That's to say topic. that social media definitely helped move marches and protests along We were speaking on it. It was hashtag Black Lives Matter. Or Mm. when we were seeing that our Asian community was being victimized and brutalized by other people. And, you know, it was hashtag stop Asian hate. And, you know, we use social media. We use those hashtags as a representation of we're standing by them. We are standing up for them. Yeah, giving out awareness on this topic. Giving out awareness on how to prevent this from happening, giving out awareness on how to help this from happening to other people, giving out awareness on to just help, being supportive through social media. And I definitely believe that was a positive aspect of what social media can entail. You know, we're supposed to be there for our family and friends and people who we don't even know, but we can just still be supporting. We can lend a helping hand without actually being there in person. And I definitely believe social media has a great impact on helping those without actually being there to help them. So, so I have a question for both of you, actually. So when the whole situation of George Floyd, 
and we saw that big divide. And we saw how we mostly saw how like you know there was people supporting you know the action of George Floyd, and there's people against it. Do you feel that social media gain any type of growth on the Black Lives Matter movement, or you just see that it just didn't solve anything? Because like there still are people that still feel like the situation wasn't justified. Okay, I get what you're saying. Um, I would definitely say, like, you will have to look at it from both perspectives. I see that social media did happen to change. But what along the lines of what it is you're saying, I feel like it did make things worse because a lot of people were just starting to go against one another. And uh. I was really confused about that because I thought we were built on a society where we are all equal. We are all supposedly one. So why is it a problem for us to, you know, stand up for what we feel like needs justice? Uh We went through a lot of years um, through history to get where we are today. But yet the society we live in is starting to just tear that down step by step. And it's why did we work hard for something for it to just get taken away from us? And I feel like... yes. A lot of um, influencers that have that big social media platform should uh, raise awareness for whatever topic, especially like the George Floyd um, incident. And if like, let's say a a little girl is missing or just like an investigation going on or like any little things along those lines, they should be able to use their platform to reach out to more people to try and at least make this world a better place. Although... Mm -hmm. Life isn't always going to be sunshine and rainbows. You got to step oh, into reality and see. But like, if we just start doing that, being more helpful with one another instead of wanting to tear one another down just because of where we're from, how we look, and just like little things along those lines, like why should we be able to um deteriorate someone's feelings and emotions on something just because of how we feel personally on the topic? Uh. It doesn't make sense because we supposedly, right, have freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. But do we really? No. Or now, now that's a great know, question. That's a, that's a good, that's, <laughs> now, now, that's actually that's actually a good point because, uh, see now, what I do, I feel like everybody has freedom of speech, but nobody has freedom of consequences because you could say what you have to say, but remember, you have you whatever you could say may cause a backlash that you're not ready for. So I feel like freedom of speech is a thing, but you're not freedom of consequences of mm-hmm. what you say. So that's yeah. what I believe. I agree. You know, I it's just it's it's funny to me that people will, you know, post something negative on social media and then get trashed for it and then it will they will start saying, Oh yeah, this you know it was just my joke. amendment this was a joke. And I'm like, no, you were just out there to be mean. You were just a bully. Indeed. There's no other word to explain it. And I mean, yeah, we should be all able to have the freedom of speech. But didn't you ever learn the lesson from your mother? If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Indeed. <laughs> I mean, it's just unnecessary. Indeed. It's ridiculous. It's sad Indeed. that you result to name calling and bullying because you can't find it in your heart to say something nice or just scroll. Mm-hmm. It is so easy on social media if you don't like what you're seeing to just scroll. You don't have to comment. You don't have to say anything. Just scroll. It's simple. Yep. It's a one finger swiping motion. <laughs> Sometimes maybe two if you don't get it on the first try. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. If, you, if you're slow. It's, like, it's okay because <laughs> I've done that too. I thought I swiped and it was just my finger brushing against nothing. Huh? Air. Yeah. yeah. So but don't Ms. worry. But Sabrina, is there any more questions you may ask us? Yes. Yes. So hmm. Now I really want to know. And I want you guys to be honest. And do you, actually do you guys have screen time on your phone? Uh, screen time. Oh yes. yes. Oh okay. let me, let me so get perfect. to it. Let me get to it. Give me one second. I'm going uh, to settings. Time, yeah, my question good. is, how much time do you spend on media? And that could be um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Netflix, just any kind of social media you're on day by day. 
Oh. Not, y'all, not y'all trying to know what I do, bro. <laughs> Yikes. Crazy. Jesus I'm Christ. about to be... Uh, should, should, I, should I go first? Because I got mine right here. Okay. I have... You know what's worse? Ready. Are y'all ready? <laughs> Oof. This is about to be so sad. <laughs> I got 14 hours. Jesus Christ. On what? On my daily. That's my daily average. 14 hours. Okay. Wow. My daily average Jesus. is 9 hours. And this is what I spend most of my time on. I spend five hours daily on Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. I spend another five hours daily on messages. I spend an hour and 40 minutes on TikTok. I spend 53 minutes on Snapchat. I spend six minutes on YouTube. <laughs> um. I spend 20 minutes on Instagram. And on episode, I feel so embarrassed to say this. Do not <laughs> laugh at me. I spend six hours. Oh, I know those days. Weekly, by the way. This is weekly. I spend <laughs> six hours on episode. And then on Webtoon, I spend ten hours weekly on Webtoon. Wow. I have time limits on certain apps because of how long I will spend on them. <laughs> so, like, I have time limits on TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Messenger, and Facebook because I'm only allowed an hour and 40 minutes a day. So, that's fantastic. You know, I'm doing okay. I think I'm doing all right. All right. Jaden, would you like to go or should I go first? <laughs> okay, I'll just go first. So, <laughs> okay, Jacob just was <laughs> Yeah, he was just quiet. But um my daily average for a week is 11 hours and 12 minutes. I spend 4 hours and 26 minutes on Instagram. <laughs> Three hours and 22 minutes on messages. Three hours and four minutes on YouTube. An hour and 50 on Snapchat. (laughs) 19 minutes on Target. Two hours on Student Canvas. TikTok. 11 minutes. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Jesus. Yep. And then FaceTime. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. FaceTime. Apparently, I had spent ten hours on FaceTime. Yeah. So. <laughs> Mine's at a good four hours. It's because so many people call me. You know, my family, my friends. You know, these two people right here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Indeed. Hello. Uh, All right. So, is there any other questions you may have for us, Sabrina? They could be yes. deep. They could be so, powerful. They could be out they of can the be, world. I'm they could be concerning. I'm they okay with it. Not Indeed. concerning. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. All right. But this is the last question of the night. And this is okay. the question that I wanted to save because it's very juicy. Because this can be looked at at many different directions depending on what you think about this question. Oh my. And I want to know from both perspectives. But also in the process, let's see how many pros and cons are for each one. I bet. Okay. Is media safe slash dangerous? If so, how and why? Oh! Ho, ho. <laughs> Let me take the floor. <laughs> All right. Now, first, first off, first off, first off, first off, first off, first off. Now, is social media safe? In in the aspect of it, yes, but whoa, it's not also, it's also <laughs> not safe because there are predators. You know, you know people that do you know sick weirdo things mm-hmm. to either minors and girls, yes, uh, in social media. So I feel like social media is safe as long as you know what you're doing mm-hmm. and what and what you, and what you know what not to do. So like okay, yes. You go to like uh let, let, let me think of a, 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 a Facebook right boom. If you're talking to somebody and they not your friend, you don't know you don't know who this person is. They just add you. They're like, hey, you know, I want to get to know you. You know, you're very pretty. Uh, uh, and they don't know who you are. Block that them. Is, 
that is right. That is your point to be like, okay, this person does not know me. This person is following people that I know. I don't know this person. He's talking to me. I got to be in the defense. Social yes. media is safe as long as you have the consciousness of like, okay, this is a luxury, but this is also a place where things could happen if I'm not yes. smart. Because not only do we normal you know, kind-hearted people and people who don't cause issues have social media. People who like to, you know, go on killing sprees and as mm. well as, you know, harm children are mm-hmm. also on social media because they everyone has access to it. Mm-hmm. Everyone is able to, you know, make, a, make an account. It's very easy. Mm-hmm. And so when it comes down to that, it can be truly unsafe to have social media. I mean... It's kind of creepy that someone could track me because I decided to open an account on Instagram Ooh, or I decided thing. to open an account on Facebook. Or, 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 someone or could like dig into my name. Like I, I personally have family members on Facebook, but if one creeper just came across my name and typed my name into Google, they probably find my phone number they'll probably find my email address they can even probably find my address i mean me and my mom were just joking one day and we typed in her name and they get a uh, uh, one website gave her her phone number where she was currently like what state she was in who she was married to my that father's name that is dangerous i mean it was honestly pretty terrifying because you know they could find me all right so this leads us to our next question is media safe slash dangerous? And if so, how and why? I want to hear your guys' personal opinion on this. Yeah. All right. Can you okay. take it All right. All right. All right. Now, listen. Listen. Get your big ears out. All right? We got to. We got to. This is a discussion. Listen. Is social media safe? Now, nah, I'm going to keep it a stack with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Social media is safe because you. Social media is safe because, one, you could do what you want. You can do what you have to do. You just have to be cautious. Okay. Just, just like in life, life you gotta be cautious. That's like saying, "Oh, is the outside safe?" We don't know because there's multiple possibilities where things could happen. Just like in social media. Mm-hmm. Now, in social media, there are creeps, there are pedophiles, there are you know molesters, people who groom children, and people who do things to like girls mm-hmm. and stuff that, uh, that you know do these type of like disgusting things to people. But you have to be aware. That's why. Uh, people tell you like, hey, if you go on Facebook, make sure your information is locked. That way people don't get your, your IP. They don't know your location. You just text them, this, that, and the third. You have to be friends with people that know you personally in your social media catalog. That's why people tell you, hey, if you make a social media account, make sure like a friend adds you, uh, a family member adds you, people that you can trust that you know, okay, this is a person that knows me in real life that I don't have no fear for. Okay, okay. And I would like to say, Jacob, a comment came in from Twitter again, and it asked, do you think men get body shamed on social media? I mean, you were talking about women just a few seconds ago and only stating that women may be the closest ones to getting harmed by what social media may entail. You never even focused on the idea of men. I just wanted to ask you from your personal opinion, do you also think men do get body shamed in social media thank you for the comment at beast boy 23 thank you beast boy thank you beast boy thank you beast thank boy. you thank you okay now see now since i am you know a male i would say that body shaming comes from men way more powerful than women now before you know all the ladies and they'd be like oh, no, no, no. Now, relax relax i gotcha <laughs> i gotcha listen <laughs> let, let me give let me give you a, a perspective right now if a fat guy, like, if a very, not, you know, not a very, you know, a very fat man posts a picture on Twitter, Facebook, IG, Instagram, as I'm saying, uh, he does get fat shame. He does get fat shame, you know, from, you know, both sides of the spectrum. Now, the differences between women that get body shame and that men get body shame, women get body shame and get, you know, you know, the variety of people who are fat shaming them, while fat, where, where, where it's like a boy, like a man, it's it's like it goes under the rug. Do I believe fat like you know body shaming happens in men a hundred percent every time of the day? Oh, he's too skinny. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's a little mm-hmm. fat. You know, he, yep. he got 
and he 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 looks like kind of like abnormal. He looks like he got you know you know more fat than me. You know, mm-hmm. girls do get body shame a lot in social media, but it's more aware where it comes to a men. It goes under the rug because it's pronounced jokes now. Body yeah. shaming, where it comes to social media, when it comes to men, it does cause men to c- commit suicide because mm-hmm. since so many things that happen with a man's emotions, they don't really take the time to be like, how would he feel if, if somebody that was being him? said? Yes, exactly. that's just it's, it's very hurtful how people can be on social media. I mean, my favorite thing to say is if you mind your business, the world would be a better place. Oh, 100%. I mean, like, come on now. If someone's posting a picture of themselves, let them post a picture of themselves. They might look real bad in the picture, mm. but they're happy. Mm. Why are you destroying someone's happiness? Because you have to have your opinion stated. Nah, and there's nothing nah. wrong with having an opinion, but I feel like some people should hold some and say some. I have a spicy You don't have to say anything. I have a spicy question for both of you. Since you guys are, you know, some beautiful young ladies, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are some beautiful young ladies. Uh, how would y'all like? What do y'all see when it comes to like body shaming? When it comes to men, do you believe? Do you feel like it happens uh, more like often than body shaming for females, or do you feel like body shaming is mostly because of females? Like, do you feel like a man can't get body shamed? Well, now when it comes to this topic, I definitely do believe men and boys do get body shamed all the time regardless if it's on social media or if it's in person and the way that they are body shamed it's so it seems so subtle it's like like you said it's like brushed under the rug Mm -hmm. people will whisper it and then like continue on to what they were saying like Mm -hmm. they'll say oh yeah that skinny kid from yada 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 he was doing such and such and such and such why did you have to mention he was skinny Mm. you didn't have to say that you could have just stated the guy's name and continued on what you were saying indeed now it's different when you're trying to describe a person and you're like, oh, skinny kid, um, he's about five eight. Like that's different. You're describing. You didn't, you're describing the person because maybe this other person that you're explaining this story to has no idea what you're talking about. For me, for instance, I used to go to school with these kids. I never knew their names. I only knew what they looked like. Sometimes it was easier for people to show me a picture or sometimes it was easier for people to just describe them to me by their hair color or their eye color or their facial features or they had a beard or not or if they were tall or, you know, it. that's different. That's describing someone. Mm. Now to make their whole identity about them being fat or skinny or tall is just unnecessary. Mm. like to say oh yeah that fat skinny kid over there you know it's just weird it's to say it's very it's, it's very weird. weird you know it's, it's weird. weird to just like bring up that one fact about them or that one main point about them like oh yeah that kid with the bright eyes is that yeah. all he has to offer bright eyes to you that just seems a little bit concerning and it's the same thing with women oh yeah that girl with you know i'm sorry big breast oh that's the first thing you notice really not that she has a nice smile you couldn't focus on any other feature but the fact that she has big breasts that's it's a concerning thought to me it's just very interesting that people focus on small subtle things to say that can definitely hurt someone's feeling and definitely increases suicide rates in this country and all Mm -hmm. over the world for instance now sabrina miss host I have a question for you. And what is that question? Now, my question for you is that when it comes to, uh, like, facial features, like, you know, people with, you know, hair, how they look, do you feel like social media has a big divide when it comes to the beauty aspect when it comes to men and females? For example, a guy with dreads who looks, you know, you know, he's tall, he's skinny, uh, mm-hmm. you know, looks kind of like, you know, like a, like a, like a cinema, you know, you know, you know, remember mm-hmm. Adam, that's cinema, the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like, do you feel like people will clown him, clown him more, but if it was a girl that did it, do you feel like they would be more passive? Because if somebody did bully her, the comments would defend her. Do you feel like that is a big divide? I would definitely say it is because it's sad enough to say, in the eyes of the law, 
they would rather hear a woman's voice than a man's voice, 100%. depending on the situation. Depending. They're going to believe her way more because they see it as you're the man. Why are you hitting or whatever it is that you're doing on a poor defenseless woman? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The blame automatically goes to you. Mm-hmm. And I, it's, it's completely wrong. Oh, you know? I also, you know, it's just that whole g- the gender inequality in this country and all over the world. It's very, it's very funny how we use it to our own gain, our own personal gain. That's when it comes down to a man making fun of a man it might be disregarded because it's okay it's it's you know they're just guys playing with each other but that guy might feel really emotionally yeah. attacked you know it's not okay or a woman making fun of a woman it just seems like there's jealousy hidden animosity between those two women and it doesn't have to be it's very unnecessary and when it comes down to you know a man making fun of a woman we see that as you know, a horrible thing to do because why are you making fun of a poor defenseless woman? Mm-hmm. But then again, if a woman makes fun of a man, it's okay because it's just jokes. Exactly. Yes. It should be equal exactly. the same way. It should be seen as a negative high highlight on either side. Mm. It's not okay to make as a woman, it's not okay to make fun of a woman and it's not okay to make fun of a man. And as a man, it's not okay to make fun of a man. It's not okay to make fun of a woman. At the end of the day, it is not okay. Okay. Indeed. Oh no, oh no. Now I have a question from Instagram from Bella J forty two says we live in a society that is supposedly equal. Do mm-hmm. you think that we're actually equal? Oh no. If so, you, if so <laughs> tell me more. Have no. you we should do it. Who, who's going first? Who's going first? Um, I'll go. Go first. Um we are not equal Indeed. in any way. Indeed. We can't. It's the, the way the economy is set up. We just can never be on an equal level with one another. Indeed. We all have different, in a positive and a negative way, we are different. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to be different. Indeed. When it comes to culture, when it comes to race, when it comes to religious identity, we are different. And that Indeed. is okay. Indeed. But the problem that people are missing is to respect. It's the respect aspect of being different. You, because you may be Muslim, you will be attacked because you're Muslim. Why? Because you were Jewish, you may be attacked because you're Jewish. Why? Because you are Black, you may be attacked because you are Black. Why is that an issue? We yeah. should be able to respect people in general, regardless of who they are. Now, see. And that also comes down to genders. We should be able to respect a man and a woman because now, of who they are. Now, we are judging based off of color, you know, ethnicity, you know, um, religion, instead of basing, basing off of character. Mm-hmm. I believe to judge someone on their character rather than judge someone of what they may bring to a table or what they may offer. Judge mm-hmm. them on their character. If you know mm-hmm. this person is a horrible person, then you can state that they're a horrible person because you're judging them off their character, not because they are Black, White, Hispanic. Male or female. Latino, a male or female. You know, it doesn't have to be based off of what they are. Mm. It's who they are. I got a lot to say. Go ahead. Okay. Now, uh, Sabrina, can you please repeat the question real quick? You know, I, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm in a deep discussion. This I need to talk. <laughs> okay. So the question was that we supposedly live in a equal society, but are we actually really equal? Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, if you now for for you know, thank you for the comment, you know, my boy. Thank you for the comment. But to answer this question, are we equal? We have always fight for equality. Black on black on white, fight for equality. Mm-hmm. Man and women fight for equality. Uh, d- people from different countries trying to be equal to us, try to fight for equality. Equality has been a battle for decades on decades yeah. on decades. And it's very sad that everybody still believes that we are equal, that we are in this spectrum mm-hmm. of equality. We are not. Everybody's different, like you know, Miss Kayla said. Now, mm-hmm. for example, Martin Luther King, right? This man wanted to fight for equality. This man wanted to bring equality. This man wanted to bring the idea of equality to people who was mistreating us, which was the whites. Okay. Now, 
during the 1950s and 60s, we all had, you know, the, the Civil Rights Act, you know, we had the Civil Rights Movement, all that things, trying to make things equal. And as you can see, even though we did make a big impact, we still go through racism, even in 2021. We still have people that say racial slurs. We still mm-hmm. see people that's being sexist. We see people that's being homophobic, transphobic. Nobody's going to be equal if nobody's going to have the same mindset as everybody. And that's okay because mm-hmm. everybody's going to be different. You don't yes. have to agree what I have to say. You don't have to agree what I believe in, but you could at least understand, yo, I'm a black man. I am a, I am a black male. I am a black straight male. And I respect you who are a woman, a trans, uh, 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 a white person, because at the end of the day, we are still human. We are still humans. We are still human beings. Equality, like I said, it's all about that respect aspect. Yeah, it's about, it's about that respect aspect. That's why I feel like, can we be equal? That we could. Is a, it, 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 yeah, we could. We could. But will we be equal is, an, is another question. I feel like it's going to take a minute. I honestly think it will never happen. I mean, yes, I hold out hope that one day we will be equal. And, you know, we will just rejoice with one another. But it's very hard to change opinions. You know, it's it's hard to change someone's opinions. It's hard to make them see different sides of a story. It's hard to change the opinion like opinions that's been passed down yes especially you know opinions that have been passed down to generation to generation it's hard to instill that i mean i've met people who said the same thing i'm afraid of a cat and then they pass it down to their children who are also afraid of cats and then they pass it down to their grandchildren who are also afraid of cats now as well like, look, they will never <laughs> no they can never you know, gain an idea that cats maybe aren't that bad. You know, they just have a negative viewpoint on them because it's been passed down. Mm-hmm. Because That's it's been inflicted on them. And it's just a representation of how psychological issues can be placed on a person because of what has happened in their family or because of trauma or because Indeed. of past situations that people can have such a negative viewpoint on being respectful Uh, it does not take it takes less muscles in your body to smile than to frown it takes less out of a person to just be kind than to be angry it is so much better for a person to mind their business than to get involved in something that doesn't involve them Indeed. You will be so much healthier. You will smile more. You will have a glow if you just be respectful. It is not that hard. I mean, it's going to be hard for some people because they've been inflicted into being to getting their way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not seeing things from other people's perspective. I may not, you know, agree with what my friend is saying, especially if you're talking about conspiracy theory. I may not agree with what my friend is saying, but I at least am going to hear them out. They do have an opinion. They do have the opportunity to state it. And I have the opportunity to go against their opinion. But that doesn't mean I don't respect them as a person. I just just want to say conspiracy theories is going to be the next podcast. Don't worry, guys. Keep on giving us our tweets and subscription. You know what I'm saying? But conspiracy theories will be on the next podcast. Leave a like on this video and comment down below what it is you guys want to see us talk about next. Thanks. But continue talking, Kay. Yeah, but that was really it. (laughs) I was kind of finished. (laughs) I just kind of let y'all do y'all outros in a way, <laughs> you know, also, sneaking well, that in there. Miss Sabrina, what yes. is your opinion on that topic? Yes. Okay. I'd love to hear it from the host. Back. So <laughs> I can talk about this for hours because of how I feel on the topic and go into like many different aspects on this, mm-hmm. which I will do. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. So basically with social media, in my opinion, it hurts a lot of us physically, emotionally, mentally, yeah. in many different ways that we don't even see just from the surface. Mm-hmm. I say that because a test was run on Instagram where they decided to create an account of a 13-year-old girl. Oh, and that her main this. Yes. And her main focus was to just lose weight. 
So they followed a whole bunch of weight loss pages and they wanted to see, will she find other stuff other than weight loss or will her whole entire feed on her explore page and everywhere she goes, just be talk about it. And within that week, they were able to see that she had a whole bunch of different pages wanting to follow her, tell her about this product, how to lose weight, and just show a lot of ads and a lot of um, pages promoting, yeah, lose weight, lose weight to look like this. Because realistically speaking, when I see those commercials where, yeah, I lost 30 pounds, I congratulate you because I see the before and after pictures. But then in my mind, I'm kind of like, is that really you? Or was it photoshopped? Because media tends to just throw us off in many different ways because there was something that we watched in class where about a father, a daughter, and a mother, and they watched a jewelry commercial. Mm. It was basically saying how they love one another because of the expensive ring he got and that they're on the beach and everything. And the dad told the um, daughter that that's not true because you see the love your mother and I share between one another and it's nothing based off of jewelry it's nothing based off of those things it's about the feelings that matter instead of the little objects that can be lost in seconds but it's about the moments that are made indeed but aside from that um something that I also like to think about when it comes to this topic is I go into music because of how many songs are created that talk about this topic and who really go so deep into it with their lyrics, especially their music videos. And I think of Beyonce when she made her song Pretty Hurts. I really listened to the lyrics and I saw the video and I thought to myself, like, that's crazy because her video was basically about the beauty pageant industry and how Mm -hmm. models treat themselves and how um, one model was stuffing cotton balls down her throat to throw up whatever it is she ate to stay the size that she was at to fit into her dress. Jesus. And Mm -hmm. just exactly. And to see how you can go ahead and do that to yourself and just um, be okay with that. It's really like, wow, you really allow what people think and what social media has to say and just letting other people's opinions come in the way when you should be able to just love yourself for who you are because you were born one way and sadly you may potentially die the same way or you may get plastic surgery and not but either way we are all beautiful regardless no matter how we look where we come from because that's just how we are Uh but i would definitely say that with this topic in mind i would really love it if we would try to change that dynamic now because I hate the fact that both women and males have to go through that because it's like, why does everyone have to look a certain way? For women, you have to have a rectangular body. That's the number one common body shape you're supposed to have. With nice, silky, long hair, nice, beautiful, bright eyes, clear skin, you know, you just, that's the beauty standard that's put out there. And mm. it sucks because for men, it's a, it's not the same way, but it's, you have to be muscular. You have to have that nice V line. You have to, you know, look nice and big and strong because you're a man. But there's a lot of people that are like, okay, yeah, that's the stereotype of how a woman and a man should be. But why do we always have to follow those stereotypes? Why does it always have to be, oh, yeah, women have to dress like a girl. They have to be feminine, have to always do their nails, have to always do their hair, have to always look presentable. Men Mm. have to look tough, always have to, you know, be like, yeah, I can't go ahead and cry and show no emotion because I'm a guy. (laughs) Now now that's a discussion. (laughs) And it's just crazy because the fact that everyone sees that way, in my opinion, I feel like it's okay to cry. It's okay to, uh, you know, let your emotions out because that's how you feel, but we're all entitled to something that social media has created for all of us. And it's crazy because we shouldn't stop ourselves because there's a lot of kids today talking about the LGBT community. They yeah. um, go through a lot. And social media, yes, it, it took a while for everyone to 
be okay with the idea and comfortable with it and actually create this big group and community that welcomes everyone that's a part of it. But the fact that it took this long and that there's still people in this world that don't necessarily agree with it, we're not really equal in that sense because for people that feel that way, it's like, okay, now I can't come out because of how you're making me feel. I don't feel comfortable because society's telling me I need to be this way, but I can't wear makeup because it's not right for a guy. And for a girl, I can't cut my hair short and get waves if I wanted to because that's for a guy. No matter how you look at it, there's always some kind of stereotype into it. And it sucks because social media has just created something that a world should be this when it's no longer black and white anymore. Uh It's all in color. And the fact that also with the music industry, a lot of them talk about strippers talking about the club gang violence guns drugs alcohol all of that and this is the young generation of today listens to that and they're very influenced by it and they're like oh wow you know i want to be a part of it now and now it, it endangers them because it's why are you putting yourself through that why are you allowing social media to be like yeah this is your life now when, yeah. No, just because someone did it in a music video or on an episode of Power, why go ahead and do it in real life? There's consequences in media. You don't see the consequences that are really paid. I mean, in Power, yes, you do, but they get out of it because they got that drug money. Mm-hmm. But in real life, you actually got to pay those consequences. You know, you can't. Uh. It's not easy hiding from the cops. It's not easy to do the things that you see on TV. And social media can be deceiving to the eye. Yes. But, but the fact that social media has created a world of how we are supposed to be, I'm honestly genuinely scared for the young generation of now. Because going into what you said about how young girls, I know a lot of young girls on TikTok who are 10 years old. 13 years old at that who put on a whole bunch of makeup and they look my age and it's crazy to me because when they do it I don't even look like that but the fact that TikTok which is a big thing TikTok because Addison Rae um Charlie D'Amelio Ari Baby Ariel Mm -hmm. um Bella Poor a lot of them they influence a lot of little girls to be like yeah especially Nikki Tutorials James Charles makeup communities Uh Redmond Rock like they all represent something which they create a beautiful art I am not gonna lie but I feel like it's dangerous for little girls to dress and look like that and post pictures of them how they see their biggest influencers like Kim Kardashian or Cardi B or Nicki Minaj and they're just like oh yeah I like how Corey LeRae Sorry, I'm more like pronouncing her name wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pronounced Corla Ray. It's pronounced Corla Ray. Ray. You know, like wow, I really liked how that looked. Oh wow, I love that outfit Lizzo wore. Ooh, Beyonce, she rocked that. I'm gonna try that. Ooh, sweetie, did that? Why not I? A lot of girls are looking up to those influencers, and it's beautiful. But then at the same time, it's not because look at Cardi B. She got backlash because she created a song called WAP. And a lot of people weren't truly okay with it because she has a young daughter named Culture with Offset. And they see it as, why are you still producing music like that when you have a daughter? And she clearly stated that she will continue making what she likes because that's the music industry she signed up for. And she can she cannot necessarily have... Um, she doesn't necessarily like people telling her how to raise her child. And if so, mm-hmm. they don't know that she's allowing her to listen to her music. She saw, I saw it on a live. Wob was about to play and Culture walked in and she said, no, 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 and turned it off. In my opinion, that's being a good mother because you know how to separate that. Yes. She's not, she's also with that, she's not expecting you as a parent to make your kids listen to this or let your kids listen to this. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Why You as the parent should determine whether your kids should listen to this or what they should listen to. Exactly. You have that power as a parent. She power. is not your kid's parent. Mm-hmm. She, she doesn't, she Let's doesn't make that. Yeah, she should not have the That's what I'm saying. Celebrities shouldn't be your mentors. 
there should not be someone I mean yes some of them could be someone you look up to or you value but they shouldn't be teaching you what's wrong or right you should probably know or if you're expecting that you should be getting it from your parent not from Mm -hmm. someone who became famous one day from your parent they're supposed to be the teaching you teaching you the values of life Mm -hmm. I would actually Uh, like to put an input on that and the back song is playing actually correlates with this so the back song that's playing at the moment is keeping your head up by Tupac these words are fantastic because this song was created back in 1993 and the lyrics that he just talks about is amazing about how we deal with so much nonsense and it continues on and on and on. Um, why not put a stop to it? Because women, we get put through a lot. It's sad to say. But um, it just sucks to say that. But side note, anywho, do you guys have anything else to say? Sorry about that. It's um, okay. Um, no. One final input I will say is that Social media is a gift, it is a, it is a luxury, it is a leverage, it is a privilege, but you just need to have the responsibility to do what you have in social media. So for anyone who is listening on this podcast, I'm really sorry that we've been, you know, going everywhere in this podcast. Yes, <laughs> just, for sure. <laughs> we had to touch on a little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? We had to talk about some sensitive <laughs> topics, but just remember that social media, that you have to be responsible, respectful. And just mind your day and mind your business. Just mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> yes, okay. I completely mind agree with you. Respect and minding your business goes a business. long way. But that's all I gotta say. You know, I love being here. I love talking to y'all. You know, remember and remember, kids, social media is fun and games, but just play it responsibly. Okay, and just Indeed. a little info on who we are. You know, my name is Kayla. I am a psychology major. So that's probably why you heard me bringing in psych information, (laughs) a lot of it, it, into what I was saying. (laughs) But I apologize. And I go to St. Francis College. Um, So where is that located exactly? Oh, Brooklyn, New York. Of course. I'm a big Brooklyn Brooklyn fan. I have to put that out there. That's my home. Uh, My name is uh Jacob Dupox or you can call me Jaden whichever way you can open uh Jaden's my you know I have a lot of names but you can call me Jaden <laughs> he does <laughs> I, I do yes he does um I am studying for uh uh computer arts so I want to be a, a graphic designer do cover for video games uh and I do that in Mecca Evans College here in Brooklyn New York can I get a Brooklyn Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> uh I'm twenty one I'm twenty years old and I'm just doing what I gotta do in life. And oh I forgot to yeah. yeah, That's 17. 18. <laughs> I'm the baby of the group, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Crazy. But my name is Sabrina and I I am attending Cedar Crest College. I am a first year student. I'll be graduating in the year of 2025. Indeed. And I am majoring in business. Big steps. Entrepreneur. Yes, sir. <laughs> Soon to open up my business one day. But this is all the time we have today for this podcast. Thank you so much for you guys joining and being able to talk to me a little bit more about social media. And Indeed. just to give me a little more on your insights. Thank Indeed. you, Sabrina, for having us. We really do appreciate it. This new experience. I definitely love doing this with you. I can't wait to do it with you again. And for everyone at home, remember, this podcast is here every, you know, couple of days. You know what I'm saying? Always come <laughs> in. Always turned in. Get lit. Get light. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Y'all have a blessed day. It has been your boy, Jaden. Our host, Sabrina, and our lovely friend, Kalei, Kayla. Kalei. And we'll, <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Thanks, guys. Talking to the moon.